Hey YouTube, welcome back. It's Why I Paint, and we're here for part two of my step-by-step -step painting guide of Tenjin by Black Forge Games. Unfortunately, I have some lighting and autofocus issues for this video, so I ask that you bear with me. When we last left off, I was getting ready to finish up the metallics, but I had realized there were some areas that I brain farted on, so let's go ahead and take care of those first. Starting with his waist cloth, since I wanted this to match his pants, I was going to follow the same methodology that I used for those. So first up, we're going to do a heavy overbrush with Vallejo Gunship Green. This was followed up by a wash with Citadel Nolan Oil. I went back over this with a quick dry brush of the Gunship Green to normalize the color and soften up the shadow transitions. Next, I gave it another dry brush of Vallejo Goblin Green, and I focused this on the folds and any areas that I felt that were too dark. Finally, I finished up the cloak with Vallejo Escorpina Green, and just like with the pants, I went in with a detail brush to pick out random stitches to give it a bit more of a tattered look. With that taken care of, I want to focus on the metallics. For this, I'm going to use Citadel Psychorex Bronze. Now, you'll need a couple of coats of this to get full coverage if you thin this down, or more if you over thinned it like I did. I applied this to the headpiece, the back medallion, leg armor trim, the rope buckle, and the dragon heads that are holding his armor on. I like this color so much I even used it for his teeth and his earplugs. As a final detail, I dotted the two rows of rivets on his helmet with this as well. Once all the pieces were dry, I gave them all a wash with Citadel Reichlin Flesh. This shade needed to be refined in a few places, so I went back over with a light dry brush of our bronze. Next up is the stone that Tenjin holds. I wanted this to be a type of onyx or obsidian that may have been used in the making of the armor he's wearing. So I wanted you to leave most of this that shiny gloss black, and I only painted the rocky part that is attached to the ore. For this, I used P3's Bootstrap Brown, followed by a quick wash of Reichland Flesh. After I highlighted the upper sections of the rock with Vallejo Leather Brown, I then finished it off with a dry brush of P3's Menolith White Base. With all these combined together, I got a really nice look without using much time. Last thing to finish up is his sword. I started with his handguard and the spine of the sword. Again, using our bronze to highlight these areas, followed up with a Reichlin flesh wash. For the blade itself, I rubbed graphite powder into the surface using a microfiber cloth. If you're going to work with graphite powder, please wear breathing protection as this is a very fine powder and you do not want to breathe it in. I opted to also wear gloves to help me keep from making a bigger mess. This took a few applications before I got the sheen on the blade where I wanted it. And unfortunately, graphite is a lubricant, so it makes it really hard to try to put a top coat on this. So I decided to leave the whole piece unsealed. Thankfully, this is a display piece and it won't be handled much, if at all. With that done, the only thing left is final assembly. And here are the final results. I hope you enjoyed these videos as much as I liked making them, and if you did enjoy them, be sure to hit that subscribe button, possibly that like button, and you'll be able to discover more videos that I publish in the future. And as always, thanks for watching.